all men play mind games. And if you're not aware that you're actually being played, you can end up investing your precious time and your energy into a guy who doesn't even respect you. When a man wants something from a woman, he can be ruthless. Some guys use violence and physical abuse to get what they want, but the more common and insidious way that guys try to control and dominate women on dates is by playing mind games. And the challenge is, you may not even realize that he's playing games with you just to try to sleep with you or push you into commitment before you even want to. But the woman who can spot a game player and beat him at his own game, she's seen as high value and is gonna leave the man begging for her approval. Now in this video, I'm gonna break down five simple ways to beat any man at his own mind games so you can maintain this high value and avoid dating these players or abusive guys. Hannah Brown is the star of The Bachelorette, and this is the reality TV show where men compete to marry one woman. In this clip, Luke, who's a contestant, he tries to stop Hannah from being intimate with other men on the show. Like, I don't believe that's something that you should be doing. And I just wanna make sure you're not going to be, you know, sexually intimate with, you know, the other relationships here. Okay. Like, I totally have all the trust in the world for you. But at the same time, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Like, if I, I mean, if I, if you told me you're having sex or you had sex with one or multiple of these guys, I'd be wanting to go home. He wants commitment and is trying to guilt and shame Hannah for sleeping around. Now, think about this for a quick second, okay? Hannah's on this national TV show with her friends, all of her family watching, and this guy, Luke, is implying that she's being promiscuous and sleeping with a lot of guys. Now, you're gonna see how Hannah responds to this in the most boss way possible. Any normal woman may have gotten angry and perhaps interrupted Luke from verbally character assassinating them on public TV, but not Hannah, no. She doesn't get immediately defensive, instead, she continues to listen and tries to understand where Luke is coming from. And that is the first tip for winning any mind game. Understanding the other person is the foundation to winning any game. Just listen to this hostage negotiator talk about the power of listening. And listening is powerful because, first of all, it doesn't require you to do a lot of thinking. It doesn't require you to do a lot of uh, talking. In fact, if you're having trouble coping in the face of somebody who's difficult to work with, it's one of the best ways to center yourself and calm down. But it also has the remarkable ability to build trust, to build buy-in, to understand the other person much better, and to, show the, to give what everyone in the world most wants, or at least certainly does want, and that is to be heard. If a man's trying to control you, you must understand his perspective and his true motives before you ever discuss your own perspective. If you try to prove your point without being aware of his perspective, you're gonna run the risk of responding in a way that leaves him feeling defensive, where he becomes closed off, and he never truly becomes willing to reveal his true motives. There were a few ways that Hannah showed Luke that she was actively listening. She maintained eye contact without making judgmental facial expressions, and when Luke paused, Instead of jumping in and defending herself, Hannah just said, okay. And she let Luke know that she was listening. This created a safe space for Luke to continue speaking and revealing more of his thoughts and motives. When Hannah does respond, she doesn't even argue with Luke on his concern. I'm like kind of mad because like the way that you just said that, it's like, why do you have the right to do that? Because you're not my husband and you're not. Can I get you off No. Okay. It's just that you're that you're questioning me, that you're judging me, and feel like you have the right to when you don't at this point. Hannah maintains her focus and perspective regardless of Luke's harmful comments. This is called maintaining frame control, and it's the second tip to winning any mind game. A frame just means the lens that you view the world through. It takes what you see and hear, and it runs it through all your beliefs, your experiences, and your values so that you have your own unique perspective or frame. Frame control means maintaining your position and perspective, even if other people have a competing perspective. It's just not caving to people please others. Rather, it's exerting your own perspective as the one that's true for you. In any interaction, especially with men, it's typical that one person is going to have stronger confidence and belief than the other. And the person with stronger confidence typically influences the other person to see through their frame. A wild example of frame control happened on an older reality TV show called The Rebel Billionaire. 
Now, contestants competed for the chance to work for Virgin Records founder Richard Branson. And in one of the challenges, Richard tries to convince his contestants to be dropped hundreds of feet above the ground in this pod that he claims was created by NASA. Now, something interesting to note here is that Richard uses more than just his words to prove his frame. He uses his production crew as social proof. He uses his position and power to imply that he wouldn't make a dumb decision and he wouldn't put his life at risk. And he was relaxed. He used his own confidence to show that he was in control, even though the contestants were all nervous. The reality is if the pod dropped, anyone in it would die. It's like an imminent death. And yet people actually went through with it and agreed to sit in this pod and be dropped in it. We spent the last year with NASA uh, developing a barrel that can go over the falls. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, hang you out over the falls. Richard, let's do this. You sure? Let's do this. 100% sure? Let's do this, yes. We were, we were never going to go over the falls. We weren't? No. We would have been very dead if we got over the falls. So you didn't want me to do this? I didn't want you to do this. And that is looking through Richard's frame. This just highlights the importance of maintaining your frame, not just to win a mind game, but also to ensure that you're keeping yourself safe. Now we left off with Hannah telling Luke that she was mad after Luke tried to stop her from being intimate with other men and implied she was being too promiscuous. Hannah maintains frame control and focuses her frame on what's truly important to her. The fact that Luke is trying to control her without being her partner. Notice what Hannah says just before she accuses Luke of being too prideful. I get when you like care for somebody that you don't want to think about somebody being intimate with another person, but guess what? Sex might be a sin out of marriage. Pride is, is a sin too, and I feel like this is like a pride thing. This is the next tip to winning any mind game. Show him you believe he's a good person. The best way to show someone you believe their motives are good is by iterating to them that you understand why they did what they did before you ever criticize their actions. Now listen, people rationalize their behavior. They avoid blaming themselves as being bad people. Even the world's most notorious criminals were interviewed, and almost all of them have the same sentiment. From Al Capone to prisoners in the famous Sing Sing prison, they all mostly justify their action and blame being a victim of circumstance. This is why listening and understanding was the first step, because once you understand their motives, you can also see how they may think their motive is positive. Now the key here is to separate someone's actions from their identity. For example, I was never a fat person, but I did overeat and my body exceeded over 300 pounds. Notice the difference between identifying as a fat guy rather than just focusing on the action and the result of the action because I am not my actions. So you can see I don't identify with being a 300 pound man now or if a guy's not being responsive to your text messages, it's easy to just call him a jerk. And listen, he might be acting like a jerk, but to call someone a jerk is to generalize his whole existence rather than just his actions. By Hannah recognizing that Luke is trying to be caring, it allows him to feel heard and understood. And in response, he ends up backtracking, apologizing, and tells her he wants to work through it. But at this point, Hannah has won the frame and she is now making her point. Let's say you've had sex with all these other relationships. All of them. I, I'm willing to do or work through anything. You're right. I don't have the right to ask you that. But to me, I, I just want to know what's going on. It's because but you did. You're and right. You, because and of we the talk. trust. You did. Yeah, you did ask. And the words that you just used were, will, you're willing to work through this. I'm a grown woman and can make my own decisions. And I don't, I'm not strapped to a man right now. Hannah's final statement was the absolute best. She's not tied down to him. And this is the fourth tip and a very, very important one. Always be prepared to walk away, regardless of whether you're married, in a relationship, or just starting dating a guy. The most important thing is that you are able to walk away if you have to. Because if you don't have any other options than just being with someone, then there's no point in playing mind games because you're always going to lose. If you need something from someone else and you just cannot live without it, well, you become vulnerable to their will. Hannah knows that no matter what, she's gonna be okay. And as much as I'd like to think that my wife, Kathy, couldn't live without me, I know that she would be okay. And that's one of the reasons why she's such a great partner. Certainly we lean and depend on each other, but she's developed her own inner strength and courage to face the world without me or anyone else protecting her. And that is extremely attractive to men. 
but it's also a requirement if you're ever faced with a controlling or a manipulative man. Without this power and strength, you become a victim. Now this is an extremely difficult mindset to master. It often requires that you think about and accept the potential consequences of being alone. And until you can accept the painful consequence of being alone, you're never going to be able to truly be a self-empowered partner. Now let's wrap up this clip with Luke and Hannah. After Hannah points out that Luke doesn't have the right to control her, Luke doubles down on trying to guilt and shame Hannah for sleeping with other guys. Obviously, Luke didn't get the memo about listening and trying to understand Hannah's motives. At this point, Hannah's had enough. But like, with all of them? I mean, that's kind of where I was going with that. If like, you were just like, you know what? I want to just have sex with everyone and see what it's like. And yeah, I would be like, okay, I'm gonna talk to you, but you know what, like, I'm out of here. So Luke clearly isn't listening, and Hannah has already listened to his perspective. She doesn't need him to repeat himself. At this point, she's done. She moves to dump him. And honestly, like, you have already broken my heart through this. Like, truly, and I've broken my own heart because I've allowed everything. Now, this is the most impactful part of the video to me, when Hannah says she broke her own heart and that she allowed this to happen. That perfectly displays the final tip to winning any mind game. Blaming others only disempowers yourself. Now, Hannah is a boss babe because she doesn't need the acceptance or validation from another man to know who she is, what she values, what principles she lives by. She takes personal responsibility for her life and her reactions to it. People without a confident identity, they often look to others to take them where they want to be. But inevitably, if you don't have any influence in the direction of your life, you're not gonna have any choice but to blame other people. Now, alternatively, when you confidently know who you are, what you're gonna tolerate in a relationship, without needing the validation of a man, you become the prize. Now, Hannah is such a prize, they made a competitive TV show with her starring in it. So to become the prize, it's so important to cultivate self-love by taking esteemable actions and surrounding yourself with loving, supportive people who accept you for you and don't criticize or condemn you. When you can confidently interact with attractive men, well, you can move through the world with ease knowing that you'll be fine regardless of the social interactions and relationship challenges you face. Handling these mind games by being the prize, it takes social skills that just are not innate. We're not all just born with these, but they can be practiced. Anyway, thanks so much for watching my videos. Seriously, it really means the world to me that you're, you're taking your time to watch and support a track rate, guys. I'm so blown away by all the emails and the comments I get from women who are benefiting from this knowledge. It just, it makes this whole thing worthwhile. So thank you so much again and be well.